Hello everybody and welcome once again to Forever Stranded. Well, the goal of this particular episode is to send a rocket off to an asteroid and mine it. So before I start that, I want to show you something I over-engineered in the end of the last episode, by a long way. Here we have the Empower. Underneath this Empower, all I've now got is a hopper pointing to this chest. And above it we've got hoppers. And I found this out from Exhedra. He basically said you could do this. And I was a bit suspicious because it sort of they don't really behave as normal things. So for example, let's see if I've got in my anywhere in my inventory another display stand. I've got one prepared. Now if I put this display stand down like that, and then you put something on it, so you right click it with something, let's say that. It stays there. You can't pick it up when you go over it. Now, if, on the other hand, I take this off, after I right click the display stand, and throw it on with a Q like that, it bounces back again because it's not gone onto the display stand. So if I turn my magnet off, F8, plus Q again, oops, it's gone to a different slot. So it doesn't actually stay on the display stand. So as soon as I walk over, it picks it up. Now, I thought that was the way that hoppers behave. I think they do generally behave like that but not in this case they behave differently and also the impanera behaves differently it's not like a standard inventory if you put something on it like this it gets taken in and at the bottom it gets pulled out by another hopper so I was expecting that didn't expect this to work it certainly didn't work with precision um, precision droppers from actual uh, from actual additions either so all I've got to do now is break this one here and that drops down onto that and when that drops down so that everything that starts to work and in here I've got 20 empowered diamantine crystal blocks and when this finishes we should get some more in fact that's what I could do is take those out couldn't I and just wait until this has been until this is finished there we go the next one comes down and starts doing it immediately and we get a second empowered diamantine crystal block. Very sweet. Put those back in again. And that'll go through until all of these have been finished, another six or so, like that. So, over-engineered over something that's actually much easier to do. So let's go back over here to where my rocket stuff is. You've not seen this yet. But basically here I have a rocket prepared and this one should be quite able to when well, you can need to go and turn something off I was playing with something over here I was playing with some music bits and pieces let's just remove that I'll stop it doing its stuff I was playing with clocks and things like that in fact um, let me just put that down somewhere else so I don't lose it the repeater now here we have an observatory, and in this observatory it is actually working. See, so yeah, and I've got an observable distance of 200, and I've got asteroid to select. So, but it was not that straightforward to actually get this to work. So I want to go, first of all, start off by doing this. So, also in here I've got some t satellite terminals, which are monitoring different satellites. So at the bottom here I've got an optical telescope, and it's now got 2,000 data stored in here of 2000 so it's full and that's gone into this internal buffer here and it's the, it tells you that the type of data is distance data that's actually very important and then process escape and the next one on here is a another a mass scanner so now I've got type mass data in here and this is also full this time I've got 3000 next one is composition so that's storing composition data and again 3000 and the last one here is an op another optical teleco distance data so this is another satellite with distance data and 3000 in it so we've got plenty of data now what you have to do with these well this one here was something else I was playing with so I've got a microwave energy I sent a, I sent a satellite with um, and this is collecting energy so I presume I can then send that energy somewhere else 
so you have to connect these up first of all they need power so we got from work they need power like this and these blocks need a redstone signal to indicate that they are the source block that you probably already know but it doesn't always work so in this terminal sometimes you get nothing but here I've got plenty of data like this so astrobody data these are all filled up and the different connectors at the back represent the different data types so let's go around the back here and have a look at that so here you have three data ports so this one if I right click this I think I should be able to right click it no I can't anyway one of these represents mass the other one composition and the third one distance so they're being fed from these satellites here now this link doesn't always work and if it doesn't work all you have to do is break one of these data cables here and reconnect it again and then it should start to feed the data out you don't normally need to do that the first time when everything's connected up for it to work properly and eventually you'll come back with a terminal full of data like this so the next thing is we need to get the data in now before I do that what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another satellite and I should have prepared here go through the trees a chest with what I need no that's not for what I want today I think it's this one here indeed it is what I'll do here is though is I'll put into this all my stuff I don't really need I probably do need Maria to wrench and I probably need a pickaxe which I've got I don't need sand but I probably will have to take my clock just in case and my boomerang like that that should be fine so and here we're going to take everything from in here because this is what we need for a, an observatory now the reason I'm doing this is it's not always so easy to set up building it's no problem in fact I've forgotten something already haven't I yeah I need a wrong chest this thing the hollow projector without the hollow projector you can't do too much so let's just put that down here like this but I don't need the axe either let's put that up there so we're going to set the hollow projector up to do an observatory so here we come shift right click and then observe select observatory and then we try and put it down somewhere let's put it in the middle of this I don't know whether that's too big nope that looks fine so we can then start to put the, the blocks on here so here we've got a data bus or a block of iron or some creative power plugs so so basically you can sit to that any way you wish you, you want but the one I've got up here is one data bus and two power plugs I'm not sure about two power plugs I think I need one for the for the opening of the top and one for the motor at the bottom so we'll put in two in fact what I'll do is I'll get rid of this stuff I don't want with me here for the time being I'll take that because I sometimes break stuff in fact I won't use that one I'll use a silk touch one which I should have in here so if I'm breaking stone which I've got 45 stone then we need to get it right so I probably don't need I'll leave this up hang like that so we're going to do it similar to this one the image is gone, which has, what strange. Right, and I'll take it down afterwards. So here, on the other one, I've got some power. Observatory, let's have a look. That will be fine. For the time being. So, here I've put down a power block. It doesn't really matter where you put them. And here we've got some data books, all blocks of iron. So I'm going to put iron in here and here too and we're going to fill all of these up with iron except for one on the side here where I want the data to come out or go in in fact so we just need a data port which I think is an input so a quick check that one data bus like that and then in the middle we have motor stones and motors now in the recipe here it says you can choose different types of motors and they are important so for example with a standard motor you get a distance of 50 with a lens and I guess with the advanced you get 100 enhanced you get 150 and elite you get 200 
So if you want to observe more than, I think you need to get up to 200 before it'll actually work, uh, 100 before it'll actually work. So you need advanced or higher in this to work. So put that in there like that. Because I'm using an elite, let's go up to the next level. That's the wrong way. Down, I have to go down. And here we have another power plug, which I'm going to put in the other second power plug in here. And in the middle here, we need the observatory like that. And then we can simply fill the rest in with um, stone. I think that's all I've got left to Yep, I'll need lenses as well. Take the lenses out of here. So we can fill this with stone or uh, iron. I think this one is blocks of iron at the moment. I've got the top of them. It might be easier to fill it in from above, wouldn't it? So iron all the way around like this. Stone in the middle. In fact, it's just stone everywhere. A complete layer of stone. Next level, go down. Oops, I have to get this one. There we go. So what have we got here? Stone again. I'm probably in the way for that one. Let's put stone down on here. Stone, stone. It's filling it in. This time it's actually a hope. It's open. I mean, you need a lens. lens and then the next level I have to get to the thing like I should scroll down it's actually a bit awkward there we go I should did that the wrong way I have to keep going down and I keep getting it wrong right again it's stone this time it's stone in the middle except for here's where we have a lens and the rest of it is stone And then the next level, let's go down there and get the last level up. So again, it's stone all the way around here again. So let's put some stone down here and then we can stand up on it. Stone, stone, stone. And the final one here is another lens. Actually, stone is in the middle here and the lens is that. So then the structure is complete. So when we right click this, it then turns into an observatory. Okay, now it needs power for it to work. Let's get some power. How am I going to do that first of all? Mm -hmm. Quick think of what I can do for this. Maybe we just need a capacitor. Mm, maybe I need to make a quick capacitor bank. I've got enough for a, a basic capacitor bank there. I'll do like that and that needs some power so let's just give this capacitor bank some power here's a here's a source of power stand back a bit because I'm too near and then that should charge up reasonably fast as it happens and we need some cables for this so I'll need to move this torch out of the way and put it say a little bit further away that's probably here's a good place charging up so I just need some power cables and I think those have been my actually they're in my backpack aren't they only got two probably need more than two energy cables but for now they'll be fine like that and I can use the ender IO ones or you can use I think in this pack I think you can only use ender IO ones uh, there are other types of power anyway. How are we doing for power in this? So it's got about 400,000. Okay, that will do. Let me just get my Yetta wrench out. Just right click this and put that here. And it should connect up. And then this should now be powered. So when I right click this here and turn it on, the doors should open. And you see it's now got an observable distance of 200. And you'll find it's getting no data in here at all. Now that's one of the problems you have to overcome. Now, if you look at this one here, come around again, probably should have built it beside it, shouldn't I? 
you'll see here you get this sort of block here with data in it so we have to get data into this machine now the way you do that is actually a trick so having sent up the satellite let's come over here and then what I do is a chip now have I got one of those with me here no I haven't let's just see if I've got one in my inventory so I need um, yes I have I've got some data here now there's a slight difference between these two but not very much this one has got uh, some NTB data and this one hasn't so if I press control here and then you press shift you see what the NTB data is here it says press shift and it's not working although press shift it is working so that tells you the max data so they're slightly different and the difference is i think this has been into a machine at one time and this one hasn't in fact that's actually quite useful because let's go over here let's go back here and find a um i don't want to find let's find a spawner i've got loads of spawners and i was thinking why have you got so many spawners on here so you can do the same thing here so if I hold down control, you see the in information. Then you press shift on it, you'll see the information about the spawner itself. So this one's telling me it's a zombie spawner. And I think most differences, it seems to be, is the spawn delay. Max spawn delay here is 800 seconds. So if I go to the next one here. This one is again a, a, day, uh, uh, a zombie spawner. And what's it different? Mini spawn delay is 200, max spawn 800, spawn range seconds. So I'll see if I can find out here. This one's delay one second, and this is delay 52 seconds. So each one of these you got little bits of NTB data, and that's one way to find out what type of spawner it is because you can't find out from what I without any other way of putting it down what it is. So this tells you everything you need to know and I think if I'm not mistaken this is actually coming from the actual editions configuration but it might be something else let's have a quick look and you'll see the no mobs around as well and it's night time I'll come to that in a second so that trick so if I do this I think it's F3 and H advanced tooltips hidden let's go back again to that uh, indexer and have a look at this again so if I press this time I'm not getting the advanced tooltips here it just tells me it's a re this disturbed mob spawner and I can't press shift on it so go back again so that's F3 and H and it tells you the advanced tooltips are now shown let's go back to the spawner and you can then see what the nine tags tabs it's got so those are all zombie spawners that's a skeleton spawner as it shows you just on the second row skeleton and that's how you can figure out what these are and that must be a standard zombie spawner so that was a trick I, I discovered by accident anyway back to this right so now what you do to get this thing to initialize properly what we do is we we take some data out of here so here i've got a chip i put the chip into the one with distance data in it and let's find first of all which is distance so the middle one's distance you see and this was composition and this one's mass so i put one of these in here and then i say store to chip and it'll take out one thousandth worth of data out of here and put it into this chip and then that's coming up again because it's getting data in from the satellite buffers so there's no data on that and some random data and that much data is distance so what you then do is you come along here put this data into this into this here okay and then you break the observatory i know crazy really isn't it like that just take out one of the steel blocks iron blocks of iron put it back in again and then reform this and this time when we have a look at it we might see some more data coming in here let's turn it on I think I had to do this twice actually. So this time I've got data in. Oh, I know what I have to do. I store this to the buffer. That's my mistake. So I can then take this out. Do the same thing again. 
I did this a few things. It didn't took me a while to figure out what was going on, so that's why. I, now this time, you see, I have data in here, so now it's actually going to. Imp it should start to get data. Turn it back on again, and it opens up. What it should do, if it's got power, which it has. Oh, but it's not night time. <laughs> Only works at night. So this is at the moment has got one thousand type of data. Now with that data, you can come to the asteroid selection and you can press scan and that will consume 100 worth of data and give us asteroids. And then we can actually go and look at these asteroids and it'll tell you what we're going to mine from them. So this one, for instance, would give me 106 plus or minus 106 cobblestone, but not a useful asteroid. Next one down, as you can see, this is going to give me two redstone plus or minus one. Lots of cobblestone again, three iron. Two gold, three gold, and that's no more. It's going to give me exactly three gold. And you right click this and scroll it up like that, and you can go to the next one. And it doesn't stay keep its position, but it is, don't forget, this is a, a little bit larger 104, and more gold, and more redstone. Next one down 21 iron, eight um, redstone, and six gold ore. But it's not very exciting. Not in terms of minerals, but let's have a keep going down, start at the bottom here, because these are actually quite good ones. So here I've got one with reasonable amount of iron, 12 iron, hold it like that, plus or minus 9, 14 gold, plus or minus 10, and 14 redstone. So that's a reasonably good one. So what we now do is we want to say, let's take the, um, let's send the rocket off to this asteroid. So we need an asteroid. Uh, an asteroid chip. Let's see if I've got one of those in my inventory. I haven't got it here, but maybe I've got one here. An asteroid chip, unprogrammed. And then let's have a look at the recipe for this. Basically, you've got a tracking circuit plus a data storage card. The tracking circuit is made with a basic circuit and an eye vendor and some redstone. And the basic circuit, uh, this one here is the data storage, is made with a emerald, a basic circuit chip, and a redstone, and that's made, there's sort of quite a few hoops, from another basic circuit plate on the cutting machine will give us that. In fact, let's go and have a look at that, because on my set uh, setup I've got at the moment, it goes fairly fast. That's my, this is my room. It's actually underneath the base in the mine shaft, which I've opened out a bit. And here I have a to mega torch from Torchmaster, that keeps the mobs at bay. And here I have the precision assembler. So what I want is some basic circuits, some red, some, I wanted one that I have ended it in time. I want to cut one of these up. Let's cut one of these up on the cutting machine over here. That cuts it into chips. Comes out here, it's four basic chips. I need some redstone, don't I? Let's quickly get some redstone. Let's take, I'll take 32 of these, in fact, for that matter. So one of these, this machine's gonna go fairly fast, actually. Oh, I've got redstone already in the hatch. But that one and an eye of Ender in, it doesn't matter what order it is. And you'll see that's going through fairly quickly. Now the reason that's gone through fast is because I've got an elite motor in this machine. Take an eye of Ender out of it. Actually you could take more. It doesn't matter that much. You can put a wrong machine on one. Put it in here. Put that in there. Like that. Was it eye of Ender? Oh, emerald, wasn't it? I want an emerald. I haven't got any emerald. So that's again, quickly get an emerald. Put that in the hatch here. And even though I've got the wrong things in there, that was really fast. Look, see how fast that went through. Like that. The other thing I've got in here is this, which I'm not using at the moment. But if we look at this one, this has got a speed of eight. Normally you're getting low speeds, but this is reasonably fast. And the reason for that is I put in iridium coils into it. So there we are. 
so it does make a difference to what you put in now back here so now we have data in the observatory and we have a chip now we need to put this chip into this machine I'll just, I think I can just combine those two like this can't I it was actually this way around so you get an asteroid unprogrammed chip like that and the unprogrammed chip what you do is you put it into here like that and then you click process discovery like that and it should work have I done this wrong maybe I just need to select oh, the asteroid selected I'm sure process discovery oh I know I did have some problem with this before so scan data let's go back to the last one I've only found small asteroids so far I haven't found anything bigger than that this one may do I thought I just had to put it in there and then click process discovery let's just try that on the one I've built before I'm not sure if I have to initialize this. Just a second, I'll come back in a minute. Right, I'm back again. I know what the problem is. It only works if the thing is open. So let's just take that other unprogrammed chip. I think I put it in here to test whether it was working or not. In here, it is, unprogrammed chip. And then I come back into here and I put it in here and then I can press the button. Before I do that, I find out something else as well. Let's come over here and break this again. So I'm going to break this again. And this time I'm going to take some more data out of here and put in two more data buses. So if I put in this data bus here and this one in here, these are still uninitialized. So what we want to do is we want to initialize those with some more data. So let's go and find some more data chips. I think I've got enough just to be on the safe side. I've got three. So I'm going to put one of those in each of these like that oh, I've just got four and then I'm going to store that to the chip so we'll lose half of each of this data into these chips so what I now need to do is to clear my hotbar out a bit because you can put these into your hotbar as you can see like this and then we could be able to get the three types of data into here so let's just make sure that we put them in here so that's composition and store that to the buffer and I can take the chip out. Next one is already got some distance data in, so we don't care about that. And the third one is mass data. So we store that like that. Come round here. Right click that again, open it up and turn it on. This time we have data in all three areas, so turn it on. Now I don't think these are actually going to I see ten one thousand out of two thousand. And I believe it's very slow at pulling in data. But how slow, very slow is, I'm not sure. So what we now do is we take that chip again. Let's go back to here and scan the data. And let's see what we've got. So this one looks reasonable. 24 iron, 8 and redstone. Not so good. No gold on that one. This one's the fourth one down. Looks 21, 11 and 5. Unfortunately, every time he clicks, it scrolls down again. And there's also something about machines being across chunk boundaries, which we have to avoid doing. This one will do. Let's use this one. So let's press escape because I need the chip. I haven't got the chip with me. I want the unprogrammed one, which is this one here. And it's night tab, so we can now do it. Put that into here and press process discovery we get data into here. In fact, it says there's no data in it. So what we do with this now, this chip here, so we come along here and then we move this chip into the bottom slot here like that. And this starts to fill up as you can see. So now it's starting to get data in. So we're seeing distance data, composition data and mass data are all coming in to here from the buffers above here like that. As you can see, that's going down, that's going down 
and that's going down and this is slowly filling up whether you have to do that or not I'm not sure exactly on here let's have a look what we've got in here I'll make sure I've got an empty handle and do this this is full of data it's got uh, 1000 distance data and it's storing 3000 same with this one this has actually got some data in it but it's got no space in the buffer it's, it's going up and down as it's bringing data taking data from here and putting it into here and the same with this one and finally the last one so this has actually got you see it going up and down as data has been taken out of here and eventually what we're going to end up with is another asteroid chip which is programmed with a thousand of each of these so the other ones I don't know whether they're actually prepared yet or you can't find it out with the sensors we've got humidity data temperature data and that atmospheric density we don't need that for an asteroid mission anyway and I think I have got a chip prepared let's just double check that this is a this is not yet assembled this rocket well, let me scan it so I basically got bottom nine uh, engines and each above those have got two fuel tanks so let's just scan this thing first of all this is the the builder it says unscanned let's just scan it and while that's scanning let me just see if I can find the chip see this is ready to build ready to clear for liftoff so we can now build this and this time you get the red ones coming down building the rocket like that in this drum I should have plenty of fuel so a quick look 10,000 yeah not hundred that almost a hundred thousand rocket fuel I think that's plenty Oops, wrong button and then I think I need to get the linker out I've probably got the linker in here let me just check it not in there maybe, maybe in my bag if I haven't got it in my bag then I've got it in oh let's try to look at the belt golden bag of holding might have it in here indeed so I now need to link these things so at the moment I think we should be able to right click on the rocket let's take the bag out of the way oh shift right click isn't it and here you see we've got a guidance computer and in the guidance computer we don't have the chip yet now I have got a chip prepared I wonder if I've got it with me so look now those are all unprogrammed satellite chips that's a satellite ID chip nothing in there not in there I've got one somewhere about so let me just check um, in here do I see any in there no I don't I've got a second link linker in there which I didn't see a second ago of course so we can wait for this to to fill up it shouldn't take that long has it gone to it's got 220 of the data's in at the moment so I'll have to wait a little bit of time before that actually is ready and we also need to fuel this up don't we so if I shift right click again on this one I've got no fuel in it so let's get the linker going for this so I'm making sure this redstone signal is not connected oops I'm also burning up probably because actually I can do that easier than this can't I, I can just take this one out of here like that and put it into my hand and as soon as I do that it'll charge up from the capacitor pack I've got in my backpack on my back so that's nearly, nearly fully charged up and as soon as it gets to normal temperature which is one more I think after this it stops glowing and I can take it leave it like that right what am I trying to do I am trying to get this rocket fueled on time so let's take this linker and I think we shift right click this one onto here and then onto here isn't it or onto the rocket itself nothing to be linked ah, let's try the fuel one 
right click onto that successfully linked so that should be fueling up and this one I think I also need to link already linked okay good which one does the other one after satellite builder rocket assembly machine I don't think needs linking so let's have a look at this again now already linked let's press escape I want to get that out of my hand right click on there so now it's getting fueled up reasonably reasonably well so all we're waiting for now is this guidance chip here and these are these are the oak chests that we've got on the top here I don't suppose we're going to need anywhere near as many as that but we'll see this fuel is going in nicely 5,000 we've got 88,000 so we've got plenty of fuel in there for this and it's now ready and what you'll see here is when it's ready the fueling station emits a redstone signal and I can't launch it yet because we still don't have that guidance chip so I have to wait for that so have a look how we're doing for this 354 I'll tell you what I'll do I shall make a pause now and come back when that's finished well I've had a little thought I haven't actually shown you how I've done the satellite so let's have a quick look at those first of all I think at this one here I've got a I was building a space station on the space station builder and I want to use this pad so let's use this pa this pad here so let's just scan that and this one is basically the same got some lamps on the side there so to stop mob spawning and a chest here with some stuff in it and then so it's ready so we can now build this now I haven't put a chip in here have I where can I stop that because I need the chip in here don't I build complete oh I have got one space station one and I've got the space station container here so what I'd normally do for my satellites is like this let's just make sure I've got all the bits I need so I want a motor I can use an advanced motor it doesn't make any difference these are just the same they give you the same thrust as a normal motor but these were some either they were a quest reward I can't remember exactly which and I want some rocket f I want some rocket stuff let's have a look in here so I've got these two separate so I can see what I've got in both so I want or I want at lib for lib I've done that right so we should be able to see what I need I need some fuel tanks I haven't got any fuel tanks I need I think I need seven like that I need a satellite container satellite bay which I can make and we also need a satellite so let's have a look at which satellite we will need we have different types of that. that's an optical sensor composition sensor mass detector red a microwave transmitter an ore mapper you know I'm not built one of these let's let's see if we can actually build this what have we got in here that we can actually use I have got some plates I have got a couple rod that's good I haven't got an ore scanner two levers and advanced chip maybe I can do one of those not too much of a problem need two user interfaces I think let's try another ore mapper so I need some tracking circuits so I'm going to have to go down and we'll get some basic circuits again so I shall be straight back again as soon as I've done that now as you can see I've got the two tracking circuits so let's just then make the thing we wanted to make before which was the ore mapper and I should be able to make this nope one missing component which is the middle one the ore scanner put that into there and then do that again this time we have an ore mapper so we're going to put that into the satellite base so let's build the rocket next and the, ro the way I build my rockets or at least for satellite ones is this way so I put down the motor and I put on it some tanks I think I need it's either six it's either six seven I've forgotten what exactly I have got my um, angel wings with me I shall just quickly get those out of the chest 
feathering on which can then flap and put these down without having to build any scaffolding like that so that then becomes six and then I'm, I don't need all of those I'll put the satellite beyond the very top of it like this and then we can scan that oh missing satellite bay There's data bus, I think that's wrong. Let me just take this off. Have I got this too high? Oops. My magnet's turned off as well, doesn't help. F8 I want. Yep. To the satellite bay. Maybe I've built this too high. No, I think that's correct. But just in case, I'll just like take off the top tank. I'll put the satellite bay down here. And then try scanning that again. If it's too if it's too short it'll tell me scanning satellite bay oh yes of course I need to put the satellite bay in the in been daft up time that goes into the machine because we have to build the satellite into here I think I'm pretty sure I need the other tank so I'll do that one first oops wrong one try again Hold on a second. Let me make the missing component. I think is a satellite container or something. I need data bus. Tell you what. I need a satellite chip. Oh, you see, I've just got one already. That's an unprogrammed one. I think that might be actually what I'm missing on this particular thing. Let's have a quick look again. Now, I definitely have a missing satellite, a satellite bay on here. Because that's the satellite bay. And the satellite goes into the satellite. Oh. I'm, being, I'm doing this all wrong. I need to get to the satellite builder first of all. Here we go. Yes. And I need that satellite chip because that goes into here and I need the satellite into here. So let's put the satellite in there first of all. And take the satellite ID chip out of here. Come along to the satellite builder here and then put the... See these, these chips can go into here. You can have two basic solar panels and a small battery. So put that into there, and then I should be able to build this. Is that not working for me this time? And if not, why not? Because normally you just press build on that unprogrammed ID chip. That copies it, an ore mapper. You know, I've not tried an ore mapper before, so let's just go back to a standard satellite type. Um, let's go for the, what's this one over here? A biome changer won't be that one. Let's try a mass satellite, so we need some of these, definitely. What else do we need? I think we've got everything else we need for that. So we can take a mass satellite in here. Then try and put that in here. Sorry, a machine. Oops, wrong one. Take that out of here and put that in there. And then I should be able to build it. Yes. So it obviously didn't work for that particular ore mapper. So now I have a satellite. And I'm sure I have to put a satellite in the satellite bay that sits on the top of here. Maybe that's. like that and then satellite into here and then satellite build oh, did I take the chip out of here I think I yes now I've got a satellite program satellite chip filling station probably needs linking in and this one 
Can I now scan it? Oh, I'm doing something wrong. I don't know what it is. I'll figure it out and come back in a second. Well, I figured it out. I was being a bit of a, a derp. I have got here the space assembly station assembler, and what I need is the rocket assembler. So let's put that down here, which I made a space for. So the rocket assembling machine I need. So now when I scan this, we should get a working rocket. But I'm going to change this design. Because this is the one I've been using so far. And it's as cheap as you can get, basically. See, everything's all ready for liftoff. It's as cheap as you can get. It's just basically five fuel tanks and one rocket liquid fuel engine and of course one bay, satellite bay, with the satellite in it. But it never comes back again. Well, maybe it does, but I never see it. I've seen one come down. Maybe they're going to some other places. So what I'm going to do is just change this design a little bit because while this is working just fine, it's not ideal. So let's just knock it down like this. Well, maybe it is ideal, I'm not 100% sure. That's what I'm gonna do is make a slightly larger one. So what I need is a second engine and a second fuel tank. So maybe I've got one in my bag here. Yes, I have. So a sixth fuel tank. So I'm gonna build it slightly differently. And I'm going to put in between these three, I'm going to have three fuel tanks on each side. And I'll put the bay in the middle. And in the bay, I'll put the satellite. And I'll put the other two fuel tanks on top of this. Like that. I'm going to scan this record, uh, this rocket. So it's not as high, but it's got one more fuel tank and two more, one more engine. And this time the fuel should have excess, as you can see. Everything else is absolutely on the, the line. Can't do much better than that, I suppose. So let's build this, record, uh, this rocket. And I need the linker. I think that's in here. I've got some junk in there, never mind. And there we go. You see it changed its shape. So that should be ready for lift off now. So where is the fuel loader is here. So let's shift right click this one. And right click the shift right click the rocket successfully linked. And then we can come along here. And I've got the satellite terminal here as well. And the rocket monitoring station here too. And I should have A satellite chip somewhere about that's a good question what have I done with that did I put it in here when I built the satellite this is a satellite builder I must have got it somewhere hold on a second I have to quickly find that um, I didn't put it in here that's my sort of everything chest And I didn't put it in here. Or maybe I put it in this chest up here. Hopefully. No, nope, I don't see it. That's Space Station 1. Must be about some... Oh, maybe I've even put it into the satellite terminal. Yes, I have. Look. So this is a composition scanner I built in the end, I think. And it's already linked in. Good. So... Now this should already be linked as well. No, it's got no fuel in it. So, but I think the rocket's got fuel in it. So we need to link this as well. So that's now successfully linked. So let's have a look at that. Yes, it says we've got fuel and it's ready for takeoff. So let's launch this then. As you can see here, I could have, what I could do actually is to simply put another piece of redstone in here. I've got one, I think I kept one somewhere Special, didn't I? And maybe not. Let's get some more redstone. And if I put this down here in front of this, 
monitoring station, the rocket will automatically take off. There we go. And then the signal disappears again. So that's now launching a new satellite into orbit. That's quite spectacular actually with two. Well, there's not much wind about today, so that's also not, that's keeping its form better. Because it spreads, <laughs> it's rather good fun. So anyway, let's have a look at the rocket monitor station, see what we're doing. So velocity has reached its max. And the altitude is getting up there. And what I've been doing is I was watching um, Exhedra's and Whisperfire's episodes and their rockets were coming back again. And I think what you have to do is press the launch button when it's when it's deployed the, the satellite. So let's have a quick look at the satellite again. See that was now finished. Oops, wrong one. And now this is linked. So let's go back here and then launch it again and see if it comes back. So here's our satellite and it's got now one data in there. So we can connect that up. And then that data should go into the buffer here, which is how it works. And then later on, I can move this satellite into this uh, connect block over here of satellites, and we can then add more data to the data processor down here. Anyway, now I think we're ready to launch this asteroid rocket. So let's have a quick look. Have I got this set up right? Oops, I've got uh, JEI in the way. Let's just press Control O and remove that. And have a look at the guidance computer. And I have got a, an asteroid in, uh, chip in here full of information. And in, let's do that again, just right click. And here I've got oak chests. They're not actually appearing, which is a bit of a shame, but there we are. So let's launch this now. Uh, let's just check its fuel is ready. It's fully launched, so sort of fully prepared, and let's launch it. Now this one goes up a lot faster because it's got nine engines on there. And I'm hoping very much I've covered everything you need to know about uh, launching, doing an asteroid mission in this episode. It's quite awkward actually it takes a bit of getting going so it's reached its altitude fairly quickly which means it's reached also the velocity is very fast look at that now the velocity has come to green and the and the process has started so the mid so now we've got two three minutes and it's going to mine this asteroid that was up here as it goes green so i think that's really quite neat unfortunately the only thing that's really not well, I suppose I could recommend a change to the guy, but what we actually end up here with is really basic materials like redstone, iron, gold, and cobblestone. And for what we've actually used to deploy that, I think that's probably a bit over the top. So I think it's a bit of a shame to send up a rocket just to get those ores. It would be nice to get the hard ores like titanium and dilithium. And what's the other one? Ruptile would be a I think it's ripped out. So I'm just messing around with my mouse. Sorry about that. Let's have a quick look. So, for example, the other ores that we can have are things like uh, I'll put back J again, Control O again. Um, I think they're actually at advanced rocketry. Yes, here we go. So I think they're either here or in the other mod lib vibes. What have we got here? Geode block. So these are, are things which I haven't seen yet. Vitrified sand, charcoal logs. Might even be up there. There's some things interesting. Um, geode blocks, sapphire blocks, emerald blocks. Okay, that's fairly straightforward stuff. What I'm looking for are the special ones. And I'm being blind because I can't see them. What have we got here? Oxidized ferric sand. And there's no recipes for these, so... I'm clicking on them to see if there's a recipe. No, I don't see any. Hold on a second. So let's all oh, this with the the lib. 
and we should see yes here we go so now we're starting to see these other delithium dust and iron dust and gold dust that's not so interesting steel dust titanium and iridium those are the three which would be actually quite nice to f to find on the asteroids let's have a look at the other page because you've got the ores in here that's the ones we're looking at so you've got rutile ore aluminium ore that we've got already plenty of and iridium ore and the lithium ore now those would be good to have on the asteroids anyway let's have a look at this i think the asteroid is now finished yes the mission is completed and it's coming down again so in a second we should be able to see it coming down there we go look as you can see there's a little bit more wind from the clouds just to wait a few more seconds before it actually lands Oop. so now when we shift right click on this I'm not too far away it's probably am you'll see that the guidance computer that chip for the asteroid has disappeared because the asteroid has now disappeared and in the chest here you'll see that we've actually mined some materials as I said I didn't pick a very good asteroid in this case but uh, it really doesn't make much difference there's not much there that's really that, that worthwhile getting but that was the um, the the asteroid mission and I really do hope you enjoyed this episode so until next time bye for now <laughs>